Good morning. Welcome to our first edition of Newswire in 2024. Happy New Year. I'm Craig Mish. Great to be back with you here on this Tuesday, the second day of January, as we have plenty to cover here on the show. Naturally, college football has a national championship set. We'll discuss that, give you a little bit of a preview as well. Brady Cannon will join us later in the show. A couple of games on Saturday coming up in the NFL and the final week of the regular season, so we will preview that. Matthew Waters joins us from Legal Sports Report and also our friend Jacob Kamaker from the Sporting News on the very latest in the National Football League. So that and a whole lot more on this edition of Newswire. Let's get started with the games from yesterday in college football. No, not those early bowl games. Let's talk about the semifinal games for the national championship, which, by the way, both went down to the last play of the game. Can't beat that. It was really exciting yesterday having a chance to watch all of that. And we'll start off with the Rose Bowl game. Michigan ends up defeating Alabama by a final of 27 to 20. Alabama led late in this game, and Michigan came all the way back and ended up tying it. It goes to overtime. Michigan scores first. And inevitably, Jalen Milrow gets a call to run straight up the middle, which didn't work. And Michigan not only wins, but they cover the spread, cash in on the money line as well. And they, of course, will head to the national championship. So the question would become, after that game was final, who would they end up playing in a very competitive game between Washington and Texas, all tied up at 21 and a half. Washington dominated the second half in every statistical category except Time management. What was going on there at the end of the game? Very bizarre. Michael Penix Jr., an incredible game. Second best semifinal college football bowl game in the semis of all time. And they end up winning on the last play of the game. 37-31, to 31, Texas drove the ball all the way down the field with no time left. They could not score. Penix and company are headed to the championship. They're going to play in a week from yesterday. So that is Monday in Houston, Texas. And right now, over on the FanDuel Sportsbook, I don't know, call me a little bit surprised in this game. I'm not really sure. But uh, Michigan is four and a half point favorites in this game over Washington, total of 55 and a half. I understand that right now it doesn't look like the, the Huskers playing great defense, but I don't know, something tells me this is, this is a season for Washington. I don't know. I'll make my pick later on in the week. Uh, also, in case you missed it over the weekend, big story in baseball broke uh, yesterday as Wander Franco, Tampa Bay Rays player, at least for now, uh, was arrested in the Dominican Republic, not for any of the allegations thus far had that have been uh, imposed on him, but the fact that he did not show up for a court case in the Dominican Republic. So this could be a story that we will have more on uh, later today, but that's the latest we know there. Okay, National Football League, they reset the Dolphins-Bills game. I don't know if you saw this, to Sunday night football, and uh, that will determine the AFC East winner. But Miami will not have Bradley Chubb in that game. Their great pass rusher was injured with just three minutes left. He tore his ACL. He is out for Sunday's game. The Dolphins, of course, have major injury issues on the defensive side. They even missed Raheem Mostert in that game as well. So we will end up seeing what happens Sunday night. That could determine, of course, a lot in the NFL. If Miami would win, they would host a playoff game. If not, they got to go to Kansas City. Uh, Christian McCaffrey had a calf issue. They're calling it a strain He's going to be out for week 18. The 49ers have a bye. So he's got like two and a half weeks really to get ready for that upcoming first game for San Francisco, which will be played at home. Pittsburgh Steelers playing great football. They are not going back to Kenny Pickett. They're sticking with Mason Rudolph in a game that they're going to play Saturday against the Baltimore Ravens. And despite the Ravens playing great football, they have nothing to play for on Saturday. So the Steelers are actually favored in this game. We'll talk more about the strategy on that with Brady Cannon. Uh, looks like Snoop Hundley probably will play the majority of that game regardless. We'll dive into it because Lamar Jackson has not yet determined whether or not he will play start in this game. I cannot imagine <laughs> many of the starters for Baltimore playing in this game, maybe a quarter or two just to stay fresh. But again, they have a bye. San Francisco has a bye. They clinched that all up. All right. In college football, as we mentioned, Michigan is now the favorite to win the national championship. Four and a half points over on FanDuel. We'll see if they end up sealing the deal in Houston. Alabama's linebacker after the game yesterday in their loss to Michigan, Dallas Turner, said he's entering the 2024 NFL draft. He said, quote, I've gone, ain't no if and buts about it. I guess so. Uh, DJ Ungulele, another school for him. Third school in three years, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, he commits now to Florida State. Uh, formerly of Clemson, formerly of Oregon State. This transfer portal, as we know, we've talked about kind of wild. 
So now he's going to be the quarterback for FSU. That's good get for them. And former Washington State quarterback who was flirting with the idea of playing for the University of Miami, Cam Ward, he was in the transfer portal, and he is declared for the NFL draft. There's all kinds of speculation as to where Cam Ward would go. Would it be first round, second round, third round? I got news for you. By the time the NFL draft comes, all these quarterbacks go in the first round. So regardless of where he says he's going right now, he'll end up in the first round by the time the draft goes off. This is what happens every year. All right, big trade in the NBA over the weekend between the Knicks and Raptors, in case you missed it. Let's go over the debuts for some of the players. OG Ananobi, he scored 17 points coming over from Toronto in his Knicks debut. Meanwhile, R.J. Barrett dropped 19 points in the first Raptors start. It was Barrett, Emmanuel quickly going from New York to Toronto. Anobi, Ananobi went from Toronto to the New York Knicks. Uh, the Detroit Pistons lose at the Rockets. Now 3-30 and 30 on the season. They did finally break a historic losing streak, so this was really good news for them. They lost 136-113 to 113 last night. Again, they're 3-30 and 30 on the season, so their son rose on the Pistons during the holiday, and now it has set yet again. And Chance Comanche, this former G-leaguer who's facing a murder charge, is going to face a judge today. Uh, terrible story going on there for this former G-leaguer and the families involved there, naturally. Okay, let's get to some sports business news before we close out. And again, we'll touch more on this with Matthew Waters coming up in about 15 minutes. Virginia has posted a record $639 million sports betting handle for the month of November. Also in Nevada, their sports wagering handles at $921 million. So good news for Nevada as well with all the legal sports books going on across the country, not affecting Nevada at all. Uh, also, some calls to Kentucky's problem gambling ha uh, hotline have tripled uh, since September the 7th, since their legalization. So that's like good news, bad news is that at least people are calling the hotline. But bad news is that people are having an issue, of course, and wagering on sports getting out of hand. And Ohio saw $6 billion in wagers and also more calls to their helpline during their first year of legal sports betting. And so that is the very latest going on in sports with us as well. If we get any news on some of these teams in college football, any NIL moves or anything happening in the National Football League, we'll get right to it. But it is a quiet day, and for the first time all season long, a quiet week in the National Football League. We don't have any games until Saturday. So we'll cover everything for you, kind of get ahead of some of these lines. Some people feel the NFL this week is the easiest to bet, and some people feel it is the most difficult to bet. So let's talk to Jacob Kamaker about that. He's coming up next. Perhaps some of these games meaning something to some. We really don't know who's going to play in these games as well. But we'll break it all down for you coming up next right here on Newswire. Don't forget, smarter to be on Sports Grid. I'm Craig Mish. We're off and running here on our first show of 2024. And we'll be back right after these quick messages right here on Sports Grid. Don't go away. sports betting and finally quietly legalizing the online portion and that of course is delaware delaware offered parlay cards through their lottery for years right. and the the local retailers didn't want to lose that money they didn't want to lose the guys that were coming in to fill out those parlay cards and you know they're buying some beef jerky and chips on the way out of the store as well newswire only on sports grid Quarterback at quarterback. We're going to lay some juice. We're going to have some dog prices. And we're going to go right in the middle. Because I don't know what they're doing. To me, they're in a complete rebuild, Kev. Go run, run, run. That's where overbackers on this 51 and a half shot. So right now, we saw a little bit more over money, but it's hovering right around. The winner of this game will be the division fan. I don't care if they win because all we care about is the money, baby. The money. Pro football today. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Back, back. I'm laying the 14 and a half. And against the number as an underdog this year, meaning when they cover, they went out by beat. There's a very real chance that this Michigan season is the best chance they will have. Oh, Rocky Top. Rocky Top, Tennessee. So, am I just a side better now? I'm right here on Saturday on College Football Today. It's bowl season, baby. College Football Today. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. 
this one was all Colts. 30 to 13. They win. They cover the one as the favorite. 41 and a half just gets up and over. And when Gardner Mitchell plays okay, doesn't hurt his team, the Colts are in a lot of games. There are some games that he stinks it up and looks really bad. And, you know, I don't know. They're just a tough team for me to figure out. I, I think I've, like I said, I think I've had five Colts games this year and got all five of them along. Football full circle only on Sports Grid. We spent all offseason where the NFL said, hey, just so you guys know, running backs don't matter. If we then this year give the MVP to a running back, the irony. I am disappointed that they lost to FAU because secretly I don't really like this FAU team very much. I don't know. They're just not for me. And now they've completely legitimized the Owls. Game time decisions only on Sports Grid. Yay, congratulations, but the game was over at that point, so another one of those terrible beats. If you had three and a half, four, even four and a half, this was a ten-point game uh, until the final closing seconds. In-game live, prime time, only on Sports Grid. Sports Grid, the only streaming sports betting network. Tips, info, and insights to up your IQ. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Welcome to Newswire here on Sports Grid. We're back here with you with Jacob Kamaker of Sporting News. Jacob's had a few days to digest everything that is happening in the National Football League and some college football as well. And so we're going to dive into the very latest going around the league. Hey, Jacob, great to have you back here on Newswire. It's the final week of the regular season and a lot still up for grabs and at stake. Maybe not quite as much in years past, I would say. I mean, there, there definitely are some cool games. But a lot of positioning, I would say, that's what's going to be determined this weekend. Yeah, a lot of positioning for sure. And you look at the uh, fact that 20 teams are still alive in the postseason, which seems like a lot. But obviously, they've had to switch to 14 teams making the playoffs. So in reality, only six teams of those 20 are going to be eliminated. So while it's a good number for the NFL, it's still not, you know, not quite the massive number and crazy scenarios that they're kind of pumping it up to be maybe. No, the, the belief is, is different than the perception, I think. That's that's the idea there. But, uh, okay, so let's start off with the, the Green Bay Packers. And, and they take on the Chicago Bears. And the Packers are on the doorstep here of the playoffs after that great win they had against the Minnesota Vikings. I watched that game because it was my fantasy championship through and through. And, Jacob, I could not understand, by the way, Minnesota starting Jaron Hall. I, I guess I'm the Monday Tuesday morning quarterback here, but – I don't know, man. It didn't make any sense to me. Either way, Packers looked really good. My concern for this game here, Jacob, is that I don't think they're going to be able to stop uh, Justin Fields and the Bears. Fields has looked great. I think they're going to score points. And so that concerns me going right down to the wire. Now, historically at Lambeau, guess who's won You know, 95% of these games? It's the Bears. But there's no Aaron Rodgers. So what do you think happens here? Yeah, I could easily see the Bears winning this game. This reminds me a lot of the game that the Packers played against the Lions in Week 18 last year, where it was a winning end game for the Packers. It didn't matter for the Lions, but Dan Campbell got his guys to show up and play well and play hard, and they knocked the Packers out of the postseason. I could see something similar happening here with the Bears, because as you mentioned, Justin Fields, he's playing very well lately. That offense has looked pretty good. We know the Packers have a leaky defense that, Jaron Hall couldn't take advantage of. He just didn't look comfortable out there. And I understand why the Vikings decided to go away from Nick Mullins with because he had the turnover issues. But throwing a fifth-round rookie into that fire seemed like a, a questionable decision, especially in hindsight. But I think that the Bears, the other element there is since they've gotten Montez Sweat, they've had arguably a top-10 NFL defense, or I think top-5 even. So – you're talking about a really, really good defense going up against Jordan Love, who's been hot and cold in his first year as a starter. I think that could be a recipe for disaster for the Packers, and I'm just not convinced that they win this one. So I'll take the Bears in the points here. I think that 
I, I really think that the Bears could pull off an upset and we might go back to the drawing board with the Packers and say, you know, they had a schedule in the rebuild, but yeah, they weren't ready for the playoffs this year. Yeah, I, I, I see it the same way. I, I, I see, uh, I watched the Packers play prior to that game against the Vikings. And look, you still have to win the game and Jordan Love played well. As you can see, they are minus 188 to make the playoffs. They just have to win. But I see it the same way as you. They were not gifted a win, but it was pretty close. <laughs> I mean, the, the Vikings were giving the Packers the ball, like with great field position. Good, good to see Aaron Jones back. Maybe that's the difference maker for the Packers. He looked really good. Uh, okay, so Saturday, the first game of two is going to be Pittsburgh at Baltimore. And when you look at the line here, some people will think, wait a second, this doesn't make any sense. But the Ravens have clinched everything. They're playing for nothing. Now, they're going to be home in two weeks for their first game, but the the chances of seeing a lot of the starters for Baltimore early or at all are slim. I mean, Lamar Jackson's had so many injury issues over the years. I cannot imagine they would risk anything here. But Snoop Huntley actually has been pretty good for the Ravens. But I, I just don't know what weapons he's going to have in this game. I, I you know, Likely and, and Bateman and Zay Flowers and even Beckham. I mean, you can't consider, I don't think, playing those guys in this game. And, but Pittsburgh is a four-point favorite. All of a sudden, Jacob, they're now playing like they were in September and October. So whatever happened to them the last month, I guess we're out there. Uh, I think they can win. Can they cover this? Four points? I think covering is going to be really difficult for the Steelers here because – the Ravens, yes, they're playing for nothing in terms of their own destiny. They have the number one seed and home field advantage in the AFC North all wrapped up. But this is still a rivalry game for them. And they have the potential or the position here to, if they win, they deny the Steelers entry to the playoffs. And I think that will matter to John Harbaugh and the guys there. Now, does it matter enough to play Lamar Jackson and those weapons that you mentioned? No, I doubt it. I think Jackson isn't going to play. You, you don't mess around with him in this spot because he's missed five games in each of the last two seasons due to injury. Uh, so you let him sit out. But as you mentioned, Tyler Huntley, he's a capable backup quarterback. If he can distribute the ball, the Ravens can run it. And more importantly, if their defense can give Mason Rudolph some trouble, and I think they will, even with some of their backups in, I think that this ends up being a close game. Now, maybe the Steelers pull out the win, but Hey, look, every kind of Steelers-Ravens game tends to be like this three-point game where it's like 17-14 or 16-13. I see this being very similar here. So I'm going to be back in the Ravens with the points there. Um, I don't know if I'd bet the money line there, but I think the plus four is the right way, believe it or not. Yeah, all right. So two dogs. Are we going to go three for three here with the final game of the NFL's regular season? They moved it to Sunday night, Jacob, here in South Florida. And, and I guess I shouldn't be surprised, but when I first saw the line, Jacob, I was like, oh, my gosh, are the Dolphins going to lose that home game that they haven't had here in South Florida in like a billion years, that playoff game? That was, you know, want to go to that game, too. Uh, Buffalo's minus three at Miami. If the Bills win, they win the division, and Miami has to go to Kansas City. And I don't care what anybody says. You do not want to go to Kansas City in January. I don't care how good you think you are and try and beat the Chiefs, although the Chiefs have not looked great. If Miami wins, they host the game. It's going to be against a low-end team in the AFC, one of the bottom feeders, whoever that ends up being. The total is 49 and a half. I am not making a pick here yet, Jacob. I don't know. I think I think this is going to be a really competitive game. How about you? I think it's going to be competitive as well. And um, I've gone back and forth on this one because we've weighed the motivational factors here. The Bills obviously need to win this game because – Depending on the results of the other games, they might not be in the playoffs if they lose. So I think from that standpoint, that's why they're favored here on the road in this spot, because people think that they're going to be in this situation where they need to win this game and get in and they'll be able to do it. On the other side, though, I think that the Dolphins will be kind of motivated to prove themselves. They got crushed by the Bills earlier in the season by 28 points, I believe. It was like 48 to 20 something along those lines to attack my historically has struggled against the bills. So I think between that and the fact that they were blown out by the Ravens last week, 56 to 19, I think they're going to come into this game and say, Hey, we want to win and prove that we're still a contender and we want to avoid that game in Kansas city too. So I think both these teams are going to be highly motivated. The offenses are going to look good, but I'm right now leaning on Buffalo. And just the reason being 
That defense is very strong, and Tua Tagovailoa has had his share of issues against defenses that can take away some of his weapons and get pressure on him. Uh, that's no knock on him. He's still an excellent quarterback, but you know if the Bills can limit Tyreek Hill, I think this game could become a little more difficult than the Dolphins are hoping. Yeah, I, I guess for Miami's concern, their defense has just completely fallen apart in that game. Uh, against Baltimore and let's not forget Dallas did fumble away that game you know two weeks ago too so oh gosh I hope that doesn't happen but it could uh real quick AFC South who wins this uh Jacksonville Indy Houston I guess let's show the, the graphic here who makes the playoffs and who wins the division here Jacob all three of these teams are not getting in yeah I think I'm gonna go with an upset and I'm gonna say the Texans get it done I think Mike Vrabel will find a way to beat the Jaguars and uh, I'm gonna roll with the Texans bold pick but hey right. let's have some fun yeah, why not? It's week 18. All right, Jacob, uh, great to see you. Happy New Year, and we'll catch up again next week for the playoffs. Sounds good, Craig. Happy New Year to you, too. All right, Jacob Kamaker joining us now, going against his Packers. Wow. Bold pick. Matthew Waters up there. sports betting and finally quietly legalizing the online portion and that of course is delaware delaware offered parlay cards through their lottery for years right. and the the local retailers didn't want to lose that money they didn't want to lose the guys that were coming in to fill out those parlay cards and you know they're buying some beef jerky and chips on the way out of the store as well newswire only on sports grid quarterback at quarterback we're gonna lay some juice we're gonna have some golf prices and we're gonna go right in the middle because i don't know what they're doing to me they're in a complete rebuild ken go run 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 that's where overbackers on this 51 and a half shot so right now he's a little bit more over money but it's hovering right around the winner of this game will be the division i don't care if they win because all we care about is the money baby the money pro football today it's smarter to be on sports grid Rock, rock. I'm laying the 14 and a half. And against the number as an underdog this year, meaning when they cover, they went out by people. There's a very real chance that this Michigan season is the best chance they will have. Oh, Rocky Top. Rocky Top, Tennessee. So, am I just a side better now? I'm right here on Saturday on College Football Today. It's bowl season, baby. College Football Today. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. This one was all Colts, 30 to 13. They win. They cover the one as the favorite. 41 and a half just gets up and over. And when Gardner Mitchell plays okay, doesn't hurt his team. The Colts are in a lot of games. There are some games though he stinks it up and looks really bad. And, you know, I don't know. They're just a tough team for me to figure out. I, I think I, like I said, I think I've had five Colts games this year and got all five of them wrong. Football full circle only on Sports Grid. We spent all offseason where the NFL said, hey, just so you guys know, running backs don't matter. If we then this year give the MVP to a running back, the irony. I am disappointed that they lost to FAU because secretly I don't really like this FAU team very much. I don't, I don't know. They're just not for me. And now they've completely legitimized the Owls. Game time decisions only on Sports Grid. Yay, congratulations, but the game was over at that point, so another one of those terrible beats. If you had three and a half, four, even four and a half, this was a ten-point game uh, until the final closing seconds. In-game live, prime time, only on Sports Grid. Sports Grid, the only streaming sports betting network. Tips, info, and insights to up your IQ. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid.
Welcome back to Newswire here on Sports Grid. Time to dive into the very latest sports wagering news and information. We do that each and every day with a guest contributor from Legal Sports Report. Today is Matthew Waters here on the program. Happy New Year, Matthew. Happy birthday to you as well. I'm not going to ask you Thank how you. old you are, but if you want to volunteer, go ahead. No, you know what? I'm a, I am turned 36. I feel about Ooh. 46 this morning. But uh, yeah, you know. <laughs> you sound it. Yeah, I know. I know. But uh, yes, Happy New Year's to uh, you and yours, sir. All right. Well, uh, fi fighting, uh, you know, he's on the IL, like the day-to-day uh, -day IL. <laughs> he's, he's with us here on the show. But we appreciate Matthew gutting it out. Uh, okay, so let's talk. Let's start off the new year talking about North Carolina. We've got new sports books operating for uh, licenses, and you know, a lot of news always coming out of there. One of the fresh sports uh, betting states in the country. So let's get the very latest. Yeah. So if you remember, North Carolina does have sports betting in limited tribal situations right now with Caesars, um, but we are coming up on a mobile launch for sports betting, which. Uh, Governor Roy Cooper just said on a Hurricanes podcast that they are looking at March Madness for sports betting. He hopes that that is going to be the, the, the time when they can go live and capture the market for March Madness. Because let's be honest, outside of the Super Bowl, and even more so than the Super Bowl, when you think about the amount of games that you have to bet on for March Madness, you know, the Super Bowl is a great event in terms of handle and for um for customers you know to, to acquire those customers but you think about all the days that you have those march madness games you don't want to miss those if you're a new state getting ready to launch um but so <clears throat> we have 11 sports betting licenses open in north carolina and we know seven who want to be in right now so far it's bet 365 bet mgm DraftKings, FanDuel, espn bet Fanatics, those are our two new ones, right? And then another new one in Underdog Sports. If Underdog sounds familiar, it's because we've talked a lot about them recently. They are one of the DFS companies that is caught up in offering this um, pick 'em games that, <coughs> excuse me, Craig, that some states have said is way too close to sports betting. So Underdog has always had sports betting plans. They've always wanted to do this. They have a license in Ohio, just haven't gone live yet. So it's going to be interesting to see where Underdog actually is in this process. Remember, Ohio launched January 1st of last year. So where they're a little behind the ball there. So I don't know if they'll be at the starting line in North Carolina. Um, but yeah, a really interesting mix of, of applicants this early on so far. It's basically everybody that you would expect Plus underdogs, um, you know, Fanatics and ESPN bet, they they know that they have to be out there on day one in new states to try to get as many customers as they can because you have, you know, the people like the DraftKings, FanDuel, even BetMGM and Caesars with their casino databases. They are going to be able to leverage those on day one. And so if you are someone outside of that core four, you really, really have to be ready to go on day one to make sure you're getting the best crack at the market um, because we've seen that if you get a slow start, it, it's it's really hard to make up that lost ground, Craig. Yeah, no, it, it, it is. And again, some of the different states that have gotten a head start have fallen behind in some ways. And I would say, you know, some of them that were behind, vice versa, have, have made a lot of progress there. Uh, one of the other yes. stories that will follow for 2024 would be, you know, several states that still do not have legalized sports betting that the market is looking to capture. Now, they're still looking to capture Florida, but the Seminole Tribe has that. Uh, California is a state that we don't anticipate being legalized anytime soon, but there is a model like Florida that is out there, Matthew, that seems like California could potentially emulate to get it done, and there is some backing for that. So while I don't expect this to pass, and again, it's going to come down to voting and things like that, we saw what happened in Florida, how all of a sudden things just get pushed through. Is there a chance that that happens in California, let's say, in the next couple of years? <clears throat> you know, I, I don't know, Craig. This um, this idea that's out there right now, the, the initiative that they're going to push to get on the 2024 sports, um, uh, on the ballot to vote for this, this sports betting initiative, there are, <clears throat> let's say there's three sides to the story, right? 
there are the people that are putting the initiative forward. They are the ones that want to get the sports betting up and running. Then there is the coalition of tribes under the California Nations Indian Gaming Association. Their 52 members want nothing to do with this, right? They are ready to come back with sports betting for 2026. They are having conversations with the national operators now about how that could look, how they could partner, if they can partner. Um, and they're focused on that effort. Then the third part of this is this is California is a state that has many, many, many different tribes. And the ones that do not offer gaming, they're part of what's called the Revenue Sharing Trust Fund. Um, under the current structure, those 72 tribes get about a million dollars annually from the proceeds of, of um, the gambling done in California. Under this proposal, which would operate sports betting, it would tax it at um, 25%, and it would, it would essentially give the control to the tribes that are in this revenue sharing trust fund, and it could let them get each tribe individually could let them see up to 15 million per year. So when you hear those numbers, it's easy to understand why this would be something that the revenue sharing tribes want to do. I mean, you're talking about a potential huge explosion and what they're getting annually that's could do amazing things for their people, right? You're talking about education, you're talking about, gosh, you're, talk, you're talking about water pipes, you're talking about plumbing, everything that you right. need, you mm -hmm. know, that that's what, these tribes rely on this money for. So it's easy to see why they want it. But the other tribes, the gaming tribes, they can't let sports betting or anything get away from them, essentially. They know how big of a market California is going to be, not just for online sports betting, but for whatever day, who knows when it may be, but there will be a day eventually when iGaming is talked about for California. And the tribes are not ready to give up an inch when it comes to that iGaming. We talked about the numbers on here. iGaming just, it just simply explodes anymore nowadays when it launches in a new state. And it starts to get the backing of, you know, especially if that state already had sports betting. You already have people there ready to gamble online, familiar with it, comfortable with it. Um, so that is really what the tribes are trying to keep in focus here. Right, they, they they are disappointed that this is going to go forward, that this initiative they are going to put out like 25 million bucks to try to raise the signatures and get wow. it on the ballot. Um, and you know, the, the California uh, Nation City and Gaming Association, they don't want that to happen. They don't want a bad taste put in people's mouth about sports betting hitting the ballot every single time it comes around. Um, we know that obviously they wanted nothing to do with sports betting in 2022 when it was what, like 18% um, support for sports yeah. betting. So this seems like a lot of money being thrown for little to no reason. But when you have those more than 70 tribes who would financially benefit from this, um, it's hard to just completely say that it won't happen, right? I mean, obviously, the bigger tribes are on the no side, and you tend to think that with the bigger tribes comes more political power and lobbying power. But with that many over on the other side, it's really hard to say that nothing will happen. Um, now, I assume nothing will happen. If if the DraftKings and FanDuel's of the world spending almost $300 million to just carpet bomb California with ads doesn't get it across the line, I don't think this will either. Yeah, no, it does feel like that. And there's been a lot of backlash with this over the last couple of years as well. Um, let's end on this. Earlier in the show, Matthew, I mentioned that a lot of the sports books are seeing a record amount of calls that it would appear to be uh, the hotlines for problem gambling. But my, I'm glad that you are on the show here to, you know, not correct that because it is true, but not everybody is calling saying I have a problem, are they? Yeah, no, that's, that's not typically what it is. And, and first of all, I'm not going to say that none of the calls 
are, are, are not for problem gamblers. And it is fantastic to see that these resources are being used and are available for people. Uh, that, that is awesome. But what we find out is that in the early days of sports betting, new sports bettors are confused. And if they have questions about promotions, if they have questions about odds, we're, we're hearing that basically if they have questions about anything, they will call the hotline to try to get that sorted out. So we always see these inflated numbers whenever a, a state goes live or it's the first year for whatever it may be. And of course, the, there are people that need the help, that are getting the help, and that's a beautiful thing. But what we hear a lot from regulators is that actually it's people getting confused. They just want to know, you know, how exactly can I cash out this promo? And um, right. so that, that's what it usually comes down to. The, the, I, I don't want to say the majority, but a, a heck of a lot of the calls are that. Uh, looking forward to your piece on predictions for 2024 as far as sports wagering. We'll check that out at LegalSportsReport.com. Matthew, thanks again for coming on Newswire. We'll see you next week. Thank you, sir. Take care. All right, Matthew Waters with us. Now, the wagering strategy for the NFL in Week 18 is much different than any other week. Brady Cannon is going to break that down for us next. sports betting and finally quietly legalizing the online portion and that of course is delaware delaware offered parlay cards through their lottery for years and the the local retailers didn't want to lose that money they didn't want to lose the guys that were coming in to fill out those parlay cards and you know they're buying some beef jerky and chips on the way out of the store as well newswire only on sports grid Quarterback at quarterback. We're going to lay some juice. We're going to have some dog prices. And we're going to go right in the middle. Because I don't know what they're doing. To me, they're in a complete rebuild, Kev. Go run, run, run. That's where overbackers on this 51 and a half shot. So right now, he's got a little bit more over money, but it's hovering right around. The winner of this game will be the division. Fan. I don't care if they win because all we care about is the money, baby. The money. Pro football today. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Ah, ah, I'm right in the 14 and a half. And against the number as an underdog this year, meaning when they cover, they went out by beat. There's a very real chance that this Michigan season is the best chance they will have. Oh, Rocky Top. Rocky Top, Tennessee. So, am I just a side better now? I'm right here on Saturday on College Football Today. It's bowl season, baby. College Football Today. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. This one was all Colts, 30 to 13. They win. They cover the one as the favorite. 41 and a half just gets up and over. And when Gardner Mitchell plays okay, doesn't hurt his team. The Colts are in a lot of games. There are some games though he stinks it up and looks really bad. And, you know, I don't know. They're just a tough team for me to figure out. I, I think I've, like I said, I think I've had five Colts games this year. Got all five of them wrong. Football full circle only on Sports Grid. We spent all offseason where the NFL said, hey, just so you guys know, running backs don't matter. If we then this year give the MVP to a running back, the irony. I am disappointed that they lost to FAU because secretly I don't really like this FAU team very much. I I don't know. They're just not for me. And now they've completely legitimized the Owls. Game time decisions only on SportsGrid. Yay, congratulations, but the game was over at that point, so another one of those terrible beats. If you had three and a half, four, even four and a half, this was a ten-point game uh, until the final closing seconds. In-game live, prime time, only on SportsGrid. SportsGrid, the only streaming sports betting network. Tips, info, and insights to up your IQ. It's smarter to be on SportsGrid.
Welcome back to Newswire here on Sports Grid. Week 18 of the NFL season is, you know, the formerly week 17 of the NFL season. But generally speaking, this is a week where a lot of the lines that you're seeing right now are going to change one way or the other by the time Saturday and Sunday comes because uh, some coaches tell the truth, some coaches don't. But essentially speaking, there are a number of teams that the players are not going to play. That goes for the teams that are chasing the playoffs, in the playoffs, even out of the playoffs. You could see teams that are out of it just saying, you know, we're done. So I wanted to talk approach before we get into the games with Brady Cannon, who joins us. And you can, of course, follow him all over the Sports Grid Network. But Brady, uh, I always find this week interesting. Also, from the contest perspective, you get those lines locked in on Wednesday. It's like you get some free squares by the time the weekend comes. But if you take those teams, everybody else will also. So it's not really going to help you. It's a very uh, tough week to handicap. Easy in some ways if you can get ahead of it. Hard in some ways if you're on the wrong side of it come game time. Yeah, it, it is a wild week. And the NFL's try to do their best job to make all the games relevant. And, and I think it's been a, a, you know, a, a positive uh, result over the last few years. This year seems a little bit more squirrely than others. But certainly there are a handful of games out there where the game absolutely means something to both teams. And if you're going to be betting early in the week, you probably want to focus on those games first. Because like you said, Craig, the other games where you have – you know, maybe a team in a must win situation uh, playing against a team that has nothing to play for or two teams like the case of the 49ers and the Rams. Neither team has anything to play for that. Those are very difficult games to bet on. And I certainly wouldn't be betting on them early in the week. You certainly want to see what kind of information comes down the pike. Who's going to be playing Christian McCaffrey looks like he'll miss the game with a slight calf strain. So yeah, there's just so much uh, variables in week 18 that I think betting early uh, can be a little bit erroneous. I, I would say you probably want to wait and see how this thing's developed. Uh, in contests, it's very interesting. You make a great point. There are going to be certain numbers that are locked in and then change by the time the deadline approaches on Saturday when you have to turn in your contest picks. And where there's obvious value, you're right. That's where the majority is going to gravitate towards. Now, if you're in the lead, joining the consensus is probably a good strategy because you just want to hold serve and you, and you want to run with the masses. If you're trailing and you need to make a splash, then you need to make some really rogue picks where, you know, going, you know, going against where the line movement went. You right. know, let, let's say a, a quarterback was announced he's not going to play and the line jumps this way. You, you probably want to go the other way uh, because everybody's going to be going, you know, that direction. You want to go opposite if you're trying to make up ground. So it's almost like contest play might be easier this week than just uh, your own personal betting. Yeah, it is a fascinating week, and it starts on Saturday. There are two games Saturday, so the NFL did a good job with this, setting it up. And, you know, obviously they uh, chose, even, even though there's maybe more at stake with the Texans and Colts, they wanted to get Miami and Buffalo on national television Sunday night, so I get that. That makes sense. But Saturday they put two nationally, you know, recognized teams on TV. It makes sense in the afternoon. It's going to be the Steelers. And Ravens, Pittsburgh now is going in the right direction after going in the wrong direction, Brady, for so long. They've opted to stick with Mason Rudolph here. The four, they're four-point favorites. We understand the reason why is because Lamar Jackson, highly unlikely to play. If I mean, honestly, I wouldn't play him at all. But if they do, it would only be for a handful. But Huntley has played fairly well when he has played. And I was telling Jacob Kamaker early in the show, Brady, I guess my concern for uh, for Baltimore would be is that Huntley has played with a lot of the guys who played with Lamar Jackson, and I don't see any of those guys playing either. So that would be a concern for me. Uh, for Pittsburgh, I mean, Brady, I do think they're going to win this game. I know Baltimore's going to want to punch them in the mouth and knock them out. I do think Pittsburgh's going to win, but this is a fat line, minus four. Does Pittsburgh win games by four this year? No, they really don't, unless they're playing the Seahawks, right? Um, but, uh, yeah, no, I think maybe a money line parlay might be the way to go here with the Pittsburgh Steelers and another, you know, favorite in the neighborhood of four or five, six points or something like that. That'll usually translate into a pretty decent price. Um, but Baltimore, you know, I saw a comment made earlier this morning that I thought was, you know, a little bit comical, but has some truth to it as well. Uh, Baltimore will probably treat this game like a preseason game, right? And they always win those. So, <laughs> you know, I mean, there's that factor too. But, you know, there's also that mentality that 
they they don't want to just lay down. It's a ba- it's a weird balance. They they don't want to get their starters injured. They're probably going to have most of their backups in this game, but they're also professional competitors and the backups are playing for jobs and everything as well. And, you know, the, the old adage that Baltimore and Steelers games are always decided by a field goal or less. Yeah. I I wouldn't want to lay the four Craig. And again, it's early in the week and this is a game where we want to see some more information come through uh, before we take action. Uh, but my first reaction would probably be a money line parlay with the Pittsburgh Steelers and someone else. Okay, fair enough. Now, now Saturday, we're going to get the force Jaguars to win game, which is what I call it. But the Jaguars are still favored to win the AFC South at minus 225. Indy is plus 450 and Houston is plus 460. And in order to take Indianapolis or Houston, you have to believe that Jacksonville is going to lose to the Titans on Sunday but before we get there let's talk about the game on Saturday because both these teams Indy and Houston are live to win the division it feels like a knockout game here as the Colts are a very slight home favorite minus one and a half on FanDuel the total is 47 and a half if I had to put my crystal ball on uh you know right now on my sports betting numbers crystal ball I'm gonna tell you I think it's gonna be a pick 'em. By the time Saturday this game goes off, I think Steve is going to be on Houston in this one. Uh, and, and essentially it is a, a pick em game. Total 47, we could get a good game here. Whoever wins forces Jacksonville to win on Sunday. So Jacksonville could win the division if not one of these two teams can win it. So who gets in, Texans or Colts? Well, you're exactly right about the numbers, Craig. Uh, with C.J. Stroud back in the mix, I actually have Houston as a slightly better team than, Indian, than the Indianapolis Colts. And my power ratings make them a half-point road favorite. And then when I run through my first set of numbers, I come out with Indianapolis as a little bit less than a one-point favorite. You mentioned the market's dealing one or one and a half. So, yeah, it's basically a pick em game here. Um, and, and I think that's probably where we'll close one pick them. You know, it, it's probably going to be, uh, you know, a, a, a various numbers of, uh, of those combinations, one, one and a half pick them across the market. Both of these teams have been running the ball very well as of late, but the Houston Texans have one of the best run defenses in the NFL, not only lately, but through the entire season. So if they can possibly make Gardner Minshew, have to throw this ball, shutting down that running game and having Gardner Minshew have to throw the ball and possibly force a couple of turnovers. That could be an edge for the Houston Texans. It's also same season revenge here. It was way back in week two in Houston when the Colts went in there and beat them up pretty good, 31 to 20. So, you know, I I think this is a very tough game to call who's going to win. You're right. Jacksonville wins and they are in. They own the tiebreaker over both Houston and Indianapolis. Uh, but these teams will be fighting till the bitter end to uh, to force Jacksonville's hand on Sunday. I would say the best position at this point, Craig, whoever emerges as a one or one and a half point underdog, whether that is Houston or Indianapolis, I would tease that team up to plus seven and a half or plus eight. Right. I really do believe that this will be a closely contested game and, and probably decided by a field goal or less. So whichever team you're riding with, you know, on the other side of seven, that's very important. Plus seven and a half or eight, I think is a comfortable spot in, in the early look at this game. All right, fair enough. Now we turn to Sunday's game, the Jaguars. I uh, got Carolina on their schedule and mauled them. It was a non-competitive game on Sunday. I guess my takeaway from that, Grady, is that I'm still concerned with Green Bay's defense, giving all those points up to Carolina. That was my takeaway from that. Like, how did Carolina score so many points against the Packers? Jaguars, five-and-a-half-point favorites. They'll probably get Trevor Lawrence back. The total is 40-and-a-half. Uh, Tennessee, I don't know, Brady. I feel like they've mailed it in. It's like I never want to take a road favorite of, of this kind, especially even what we saw last week with, with the Rams not being able to cover against the Giants. But I just don't know how much fight uh, Tennessee has going into the week. So that's my concern there. Yeah, I'm definitely with you. And, and we saw it last week. They had no fight last week. I think they might show up here. Uh, uh, you know, Mike Vrabel as a home dog. Uh, that was the case last week and it didn't work. But I think they may have one last effort in them. 
Uh, my power ratings came to the Jacksonville Jaguars minus five. And of course, that's where the market is. But when I ran my first set of numbers, I came out to Jacksonville as just a one point favorite, which I found very interesting. Of course, Tennessee, this is a team that must win against a team that is looking to play spoiler. And typically in that situation, I like to bet on the team that is looking to play spoiler. That number will probably become inflated on Jacksonville. The, t the public is going to tend to, you know, side with that squad because, you know, a must-win situation situation means they, they must they, they must be the right side. It's not not really the case. I always say if you must win, you must not be that good. You wouldn't be in that situation uh, that you're in here late in the season. This is a very interesting angle here, Craig, and you're going to have to ferret some of these out. There are going to be these situations across the league, players that have certain incentives in their contract going into the last game of the season. Titans wide receiver DeAndre Hopkins is set to really cash in if he can cross a few milestones. $250,000 bonus for 75 receptions. He currently has 68 $250,000 bonus for 100 and, or 1,050 yards receiving. He currently has 1,011. $250,000 bonus for eight touchdowns, and he currently has six. So if he has wow. a big game, those are all attainable goals with 750000 on the line for DeAndre Hopkins, maybe the best player on the field for the Tennessee Titans. So I think you can kind of figure that into your handicap a little bit and definitely into the player prop market for DeAndre Hopkins looking at this game on Sunday. I tell you what, again, I'm going to wait as this week rolls on before I get involved. If I had to bet it right now, I would not be surprised at all if Tennessee covered this number, but to win outright, not so sure about that. It may look like the Jacksonville Jaguars are going to be the champs of the AFC South. Maybe some player prop action on Hopkins. Thank you for that, Brady. We'll hit on that later in the week. Uh, real quick, let's end with some golf here. The Century Tournament of Champions opens yeah. up the PGA Tour yeah. season. Uh, a lot of the big names are in it. Of course, John Rahm is now with Live Golf, so he is not. Uh, Scotty Scheffler, we're going to see him as a heavy favorite in a lot of tournaments that he's playing in until proven otherwise. Yeah, golf is back. The new year is here, and so is the PGA Tour. I'm really excited for that. This is one of my favorite tournaments. I've played this course half a dozen times. Just an absolutely gorgeous place, Kapalua in Maui, Hawaii. Um, it is a signature event, 59 players in the field, no cut. A signature event, meaning all the top players are going to be here. You're right, Scheffler is the short price here at about 5-1. to one. I did take Scotty Scheffler. I got him at plus 550. I took Colin Morikawa at 14 to one, the hard luck loser last year who was caught by John Rahm when he had as many as a nine shot lead on Sunday. He's got something to prove here. And then a couple of long shots. I went with Cameron Young at about 50 to one and Sahith Tagala at 70 to one. All right. Love it, Brady. Have a great week. You too. We'll be right back. sports betting and finally quietly legalizing the online portion and that of course is delaware delaware offered parlay cards through their lottery for years right. and the the local retailers didn't want to lose that money they didn't want to lose the guys that were coming in to fill out those parlay cards and you know they're buying some beef jerky and chips on the way out of the store as well newswire only on sports grid Quarterback at quarterback. We're going to lay some juice. We're going to have some golf prices. And we're going to go right in the middle. Because I don't know what they're doing. To me, they're in a complete rebuild, Kev. Go run, run, run. That's where overbackers on this 51 and a half shot. So right now, we saw a little bit more over money, but it's hovering right around. The winner of this game will be the division. Pick. I don't care if they win because all we care about is the money, baby. The money. Pro football today. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Ah, ah, I'm laying the 14 and a half. And against the number as an underdog this year, meaning when they cover, they went out by four. There's a very real chance that this Michigan season is the best chance they will have. Oh, Rocky Top. 
So, am I just a side better now? I'm right here on Saturday on College Football Today. It's bowl season, baby. College Football Today. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. This one was all Colts. 30-13. to 13. They win. They cover the one as the favorite. 41 and a half just gets up and over. And when Gardner Mitchell plays okay, doesn't hurt his team, the Colts are in a lot of games. There are some games that he stinks it up and looks really bad. And, you know, I don't know. They're just a tough team for me to figure out. I, I think, I, like I said, I think I've had five Colts games this year and got all five in the wall. Football full circle. Only on Sports Grid. We spent all offseason where the NFL said, hey, just so you guys know, running backs don't matter. If we then this year give the MVP to a running back, the irony, I am disappointed that they lost to FAU because secretly I don't really like this FAU team very much. I I don't know. They're just not for me. And now they've completely legitimized the hour. Game time decisions only on SportsGrid. Yay, congratulations, but the game was over at that point, so another one of those terrible beats. If you had three and a half, four, even four and a half, this was a ten-point game uh, until the final closing seconds. In-game live, prime time, only on SportsGrid. SportsGrid, the only streaming sports betting network. Tips, info, and insights to up your IQ. It's smarter to be on SportsGrid. Matthew McConaughey back on the sidelines last night for the game between Texas and Washington. A lot of people on social media so upset with Matthew McConaughey giving Texas their players high fives, like, you know, head of the bench, you know, rallying the troops and trying to get them all fired up. I mean, it's Matthew McConaughey. Who cares? Like, really? Like, this is like, why, why does everybody have to be angry about something? This is what I want to know. But uh, anyway, after the game, uh, McConaughey, who was there last night, uh, to cheer on his Texas Longhorns as he does for basketball and for football. Sent out a post on social media. Very proud of the way that the team worked. But, I mean, look, he is arguably, I don't know, what would you put Matthew McConaughey as far as, like, Hollywood movie stars right now on the male side? Would you say he's top five, top three? Like, pretty much up there as far as it's concerned. Great to have him there. And if that makes the players play better or they think he's really cool, great. Now, some people say some of the players may have no idea who he is. That could be possible, too. I get that. But this is a new world of NILs and everything else. And if you could take advantage of a celebrity helping out your team, so be it. Work for the Chiefs, right? Well, maybe not so much. Anyway, that'll do it for our show today. Thanks to Brady Cannon for coming on the program. Also, thanks to Matthew Waters from Legal Sports Report and Jacob Kamaker from Sporting News. As always, thanks to our producer, Sam, and I'm Craig Mish. Don't forget, coming up next, it is the early line. We got Donnie in the house with Joe Ranieri. That will be followed by Coast to Coast as Carver High and everybody and the gang have you covered for that. I'll be back with you on the Wednesday edition of Newswire. That is tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. Eastern as we get ready for the, of course, final big week of the National Football League season. And now just a few days away from seeing whether or not Michigan can seal the deal for the college football national championship as they take on Washington. So I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Hope you had a great New Year and a great holiday, but here at Sports Grid, it is full steam ahead toward the NFL playoffs and the Super Bowl. Great coverage coming for you, so hopefully you can stick around for that as well. Enjoy the rest of your day. Great to be back with you, and I'll see you tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. Eastern right here on Sports Grid. Have a great day.